Alex here, and today I thought we'd do something a little bit different. Rather than showing you a redesign of a graph or a set of slides or maybe even a tutorial, I thought I'd show you the behind the scenes of how I approach creating a presentation. And so for illustrative purposes, I'm going to demonstrate via a presentation that I actually shared on the channel a couple of years ago. And my hope is that you can see the behind the scenes here, but you can also get a sense of what the final outcome is as well. The process that I'm going to follow comes from our latest book, Storytelling With You, Plan, Create, and Deliver Stellar Presentations. So let's go ahead and jump straight in with the first part of the process, all about planning. Now the process starts by getting clear on who is the audience for the intended presentation. Now, one of the strategies that I like to use that helps me not only think about my audience, but also the specific message I need to get across to someone else is known as the big idea. And the big idea is just a single sentence that articulates my point of view while also conveying what's at stake from the perspective of my audience. This probably sounds fairly easy to do, but it's actually quite challenging to boil this down to just one single sentence. And that's often why I start using something known as the big idea worksheet. It allows me to think through each of the components, my audience and what's at stake separately. And then at the very bottom, it's just like a puzzle where I start to pull together all of the different pieces, wordsmith and edit myself. Now, very rarely do I get my one sentence right uh, off the bat. Usually I edit myself, rearrange things, rewrite my sentence a few times. But the benefit of having this early on is that now I have this guiding North Star, which is going to help me ensure that everything else I build for this presentation is on target. So I put that slightly off in view and I start planning out what the rest of my presentation is going to look like. And so to do that, I use a technique called storyboarding. I break out the stickies and some Sharpies and truthfully, I just set a clock for like 10 minutes and allow myself to brainstorm different ideas. So this could be data that I'm going to include in the presentation, talking points, high level ideas. I just write everything down, get it out of my head. Then I take a step back and I start editing my pile of stickies. I hold it up to my big idea, consider whether or not it's truly helping me get my point across. If the answer is yes, totally keep it. If the answer is no, then I start a discard pile. Stickies that I can later on recycle. Once I've edited myself down, then I take a look at all of the stickies that are left and I start reordering them in a way that's going to be intuitive to talk through for that final presentation. It doesn't have to be perfect, but just getting some sense of a logical order. And it's usually during this time that I also start to get some ideas for how I might incorporate data into the presentation. So if I have any ideas for graphs or charts or images that I'll use, I usually uh, sketch those out. Once I have my storyboard all set, now I'm ready to start creating content. And all of the thoughtful planning that I've just done is going to make everything so much easier. If you can imagine, every single one of those stickies that I just created will ultimately become a slide in my final presentation. And so what that means is I already know what my slide deck is going to look and sound like. It's just a matter of creating the actual content. Now, speaking of creating content, I tend to think of content in two different categories. There's the actual design of the slides themselves, but then there's the evidence or the supporting content that goes within those slides. And that's typically graphs and images. Because I'm somebody who's more comfortable with data, I like to start by designing my graphs first, and then I'll bring my attention to the actual design of the slides. And so for me, I like to work with data. So I usually start by creating the graphs. Now, the two graphs that I sketched out, a square area chart and a dot plot, unfortunately, they're not default chart templates within Excel. So I have to use some brute force Excel to create them. So for the square area chart, I'm just going to use the cells of Excel. So I'm just resizing them and then layering on some formatting, changing the borders as well as the fill color. And I'll eventually copy and paste these into my presentation. For the dot plot, I'm going to use a scatter plot. So it's really just a data problem where I have to think through what are the actual data points that I'm going to use so that it looks the way that I want it to. And then again, it's a formatting game of applying different colors, removing any clutter. 
once I have my graphs where I want them, I look at my storyboard and just make sure that there aren't any images I want to include. So I had an idea that because this given presentation is about mobile push notifications, it might be useful to share a sample of what that push notification actually looks like. So now that I have my supporting evidence for my presentation set, now I can think about the actual design of my slides. So I always make sure that my storyboard is within view as I'm working at the computer. And I ultimately take every single sticky and I map it to a slide. Now, truthfully, sometimes one sticky ends up being three slides, um, but you get the point. So each sticky gets wordsmithed into a slide title. I can apply some rich formatting just to make the keywords stand out. And then I take a step back and I look at the high level structure of this slide, read through everything just to make sure that things are making sense. This is called horizontal logic, something that we talk about in the book. And it ultimately means that when you read through the slide titles of your presentation, together they should convey the high level message or overarching story that you're trying to get across. I feel pretty good about things. So now it's a matter of just designing these slides, copy and paste all the images, the different graphs. And now I start to play with background colors and so forth. And before you know it, my slide deck is done. Now you might think I'm totally done. I've created my presentation, but we're actually only two thirds into this process. And it's this final third step that is the make or break moment for whether or not I'll be successful during that final presentation. My first couple practice runs are done directly at the computer where I put my slides in presentation modes and I just start talking to each individual slide, thinking about what I'll say during each slide, but also how I'll transition from one slide to the next. And it's sometimes during this time that I realize I need to play with my slides. So for instance, just because I'm looking at my slides through a different lens, realized I had a spelling mistake here, so I corrected that. Also realized that I needed a little bit more animation. I was talking for like three to five minutes on this slide. So I decided just to layer on some transparent text boxes and animate each th through each group as I was talking through it. Now, once I feel good about talking through the content within my slides, now it's time to actually practice without my slides. Sometimes I'll do this by going for a walk around my neighborhood or just walking around my house, doing some chores. But usually when I get to a point that I can talk through all of the content from beginning to end without any sort of visual guides, that's usually an indication that I know my stuff well enough that I'm ready for that final event. So here we go. So there you have it, the storytelling with data process for planning, creating, and delivering a stellar presentation. Now I do hope you'll check out that final presentation. I'll link it right down here down below, including the timestamp. And if you wanna learn more about this process, you can certainly check out content from the book, or I will also link some additional resources for you to check out in the description down below. My name's Alex, I hope you enjoyed this, and I'll see you next time.